The European Council is recommending adding Kosovo to its ranks, and Serbia is not happy about this. Joining us to discuss today is Nick Stankovic. He is a Serbian and an expert in Asian and Serbian politics. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me again. It's always a pleasure. It's my pleasure. So what has happened today is that the European Commission is reaching into Kosovo. Serbia is not happy about this. Can we say that this is another conflict that's boiling, perhaps instigated by the West? Can you give us a little bit of a history and what this means? Well, I think most people remember that there was a uh, NATO intervention in, in Kosovo in Serbia, or in, then known as Yugoslavia, Serbia and Montenegro, about Kosovo. So Kosovo uh, was, uh, quote unquote, liberated by NATO and NATO moved in to sort of have a peace agreement. Uh, and at some point in 2008, they actually declared independence, which Serbia doesn't recognize. A lot of the Western countries recognize. But for example, China, India, Russia do not recognize. So um, that's kind of where we are. Since then, there has been many uh, steps to make, uh, to sort of make what they called to make life of the people in the Balkans, in Serbia and in Kosovo. And that's true to make it more uh, normal. And, and there was a, a, several steps that Serbia agreed to, for example, to recognize diplomas and license plates. And it was kind of very, it was very painful for Serbia to do that step by step in part, because each step essentially was a mini recognition of Kosovo's independence, which Serbia has said it will never do. So um, what has happened, what has happened um, 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 yesterday, it's the, uh, the, it's, sort of, it's just the next step. So now the, it's now it's now it's the European Council that's going to recognize or accept Kosovo into its membership, uh, which is something that obviously, again, is, is something that Serbia is not happy, as you mentioned. Well, earlier this week, Kosovo President Alvin Kurti, which we've called a couple of times or not, it's not my words, but Vucic, the, pr the prime minister of Serbia, has said that he's a wannabe Zelensky. And he continues to up the rhetoric on X, saying that Serbia is on the verge of attacking Kosovo. Is this rhetoric or is it true? Well, I think um, I think it's well, I think it's mostly rhetoric, but it's true that Kurti has been pushing uh, very aggressively to for some of these steps and to sort of uh, breaking some of the making some unilateral actions that even the United States was not happy. There were several, and, and also the European Union, they were not happy because he's pushing for it and he's making some of these steps which really ag aggravate Serbia. And in some cases, and we've, if people remember, I think last year, uh, Vucic even ordered Serbian military to the border, which everybody knew nothing was going to happen. But it's, it's kind of tense, right? It's very tense. Now, for that in particular uh, comment by Vucic, I think it's sort of in jest. However... There is a connection between uh, what has happened, what is happening in Kosovo, and what is happening in Ukraine. Of course, Russia is supporting Serbia by uh, essentially also blocking uh, Kosovo's membership in the UN. You know, they've never actually attempted it because Russia has said we'll put a veto in, uh, and so it wouldn't happen. But also because some of the actually the situation is not that there's some similarities between the two situations, and of course. A lot of people in um, in Europe consider Serbia, and there's even you know they've they've used this as well as little Russia. You know, it's where Serb, Serbs are like the little Russia in the Balkans, and also you know in Kahoot. So it's a little bit of there's a jest on both sides, I think. Uh, but there's some there's some truth to it, and you know both sides. Are, and I think what Kurti's trying to do is he's trying to sort of escalate his problem or his situation into the spotlight of whatever's happening because most of the focus obviously in Europe now is in Ukraine and Russia and all that. And Kurti is like, me too, me too, we're there too. It's the same thing, you know. We, right. So that's kind of what's what that is all about. Well, I guess as a Westerner, my taxes are going to drag out a war in Ukraine under this rhetoric that Ukraine is a hopeful and on the up and up democracy, which I reject. So I guess I'm asking maybe a little bit self-referencing, but are they going to start selling me Kosovo as a beacon of hope Again? that we need to liberate from but that's either already Russia happened. or... But that is a, okay. That's that happening happened in front of our eyes, is what you're saying. 
well, well, actually that has happened in 99, right? So this is, you know, that's kind of almost what they're trying to do is actually close that story. Part of the reason why they're trying to close the story of Kosovo, which close for them means essentially uh, Kosovo becoming uh, a member of the UN. I think that's sort of the, 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 the end game. And they want to close that story in part before anything happens in Ukraine or the end of the conflict in Ukraine, which is probably not going to happen very soon. But they, they would certainly like to close Kosovo because the two situations are somewhat related. And solution for one may actually affect the solution for another one. So, for example, if Kosovo is admitted to the UN, uh, then, you know, maybe what Russia is doing is going to be, uh, you know, uh, the, the adoption of Donbass, for example, into Russia and all these new regions, Russia could claim the same thing. Um, but so so that's there's actually a plan. And this is something that I mentioned to you. There's actually a plan called the Franco-German plan, which is kind of being hush hush. And it's we're not even sort of allowed to talk about it. Well, not really. But I mean, it, it's not even brought to like the Serbian parliament. It's no, it's not being discussed. And even Vucic is kind of not, you know, sort of allowed to talk about it. And, and, and the plan basically says, because Serbia said, we're not going to recognize Kosovo, right, ever. And um, and Russia has said, as long as Serbia doesn't recognize Kosovo, we'll put a veto in the UN. So that's never happening, right? And also China said the same thing, because they basically said, whatever Serbia agrees to, if Serbia agrees to it, well, you know, that, then that's their thing. But, but if they don't agree to, we'll just veto it. So what they're trying to do now with this Franco-German plan is to make sure that the plan says Serbia will not object. Okay, so it's not it, it's not like Serbia has to recognize Kosovo, but Serbia will not object to Kosovo uh, becoming members member of international organizations, mainly the UN. And so um, they brought this to Vucic. They gave it to him, and of course, you know, when people so it was almost secret, like nobody knew what what it said. And so Vucic came back from this meeting, and everybody was like, "What happened? Did you sign anything? What does it say?" And, and then he said what it says, and they said, "Well, did you sign it?" Did you accept it? And he said, I, I did not reject it because the plan also says if Serbia rejects it, there will be serious consequences. So nobody knows what that is, of course. And, you know, Serbia has been bombed already. So everybody was like, you know, but so Vucic, you know, he doesn't want to reject it because that then the serious conflict, which probably means sanctions and things like that. But so he said, I'm not I didn't reject it. Well, did you accept it? I didn't reject it. Um, oh, and, okay. and then they asked him, they asked him if he signed anything and he said he didn't sign anything. And so a lot of the Serbian opposition, for example, in Serbia is saying, well, we need to discuss this at the point. We have to have a vote. We have to have a referendum. If we're going to accept this plan, then we need to have a vote. But that's not the, apparently what, you know, France and Germany would allow. And Vucic is sort of, you know, he can't really talk about it, but he cannot reject it because rejecting it would be bad. Con so anyway, it's a very... Uh, so that's actually, I think, at the uh, that's the most serious thing happening right now. This thing with the Council of Europe is uncomfortable. It's just another step. But I think um, um, the Franco-German plan is really, uh, really the scary part. Yes. Especially I was reading a book this week called Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Have you ever heard of this book? Oh, I read that. Oh, I read it a long time ago. Yes. Okay. So a lot of times it's in the book it says that when the west presents a country with a plan that will benefit the west and a leader pushes back what happens is the jackals come in which are cia backed coups so this reads to me like a possibility but i don't know what consequences he's being threatened with right well, obviously, he cannot talk about it openly and, and he cannot share some of the personal conversations. Although I think Vucic, uh, you know, he's been in power for 12 years and he has been a very cooperative, including on Kosovo and some other issues as well, with the European Union and the United States. He actually has a very good, a decent relationship with the Biden administration and has a very good relationship or had a very good relationship with the Trump administration. So... He is, um, he's not the bad boy, really, like, for example, you know, maybe Lukashenko or somebody like that. So he has been very cooperative, for which he has been criticized as well in Serbia. But I don't think they're going to coup him. Um, so as long as he cooperates. So, so some people in Serbia, so this is what's happening internally in Serbia, is, is some people are saying, not necessarily, are, you know, they're saying he's under pressure and he's going to sign something because he's under pressure 
but we don't, we won't know what it is. Yeah. And he's going to sign it maybe in the best of intentions, you know, to prevent something bad. That, but so, so, so a lot of people in service say, we need to know what is going on. We need to hear it. We need to vote, discuss it. We need to vote on it. And he is not doing it in part, probably because they told him, you know, don't make it really public. And so that's where we are. It's very murky and it's very, and then once in a while, you know, he comes out with these messages like two days ago that says, you know, situation is very serious. You know, we've been, you know, given some ultimatums and this and that. Everybody's like, well, you know, what is going on? So. Right. But uh, he spoke to the United Nations in 2022 and said, it's better to go to peace talks to 100 for 100 years than wage war for even one day. And that's a paraphrase. Uh, so now right. we'll see if he, you know, actually does this. It, it, it doesn't seem, and, and so what you're saying is that these are boiling contradictions, boiling conflicts, right. but it doesn't seem like a full on war is going to happen. And we are talking right. this week on the 25 year anniversary of when NATO started illegally bombing Serbia. Right. So that also may be why tensions are so hot, right? Right, and, and also, so that uh, bombing of, of Yugoslavia or Serbia was definitely legal because there was no UN approval, which is also interesting because, of course, you know, there was no UN approval for Russia's mili uh, military action. So um, that's also kind of related. And also NATO is involved in both conflicts, including the one in Ukraine, obviously, even though they say we're not part of it. But of course, we know they are. So there's a lot of things going on. And I think tensions are high um, in part because of Ukraine as well. And, um, you know, I, there's nothing imminent, there's nothing imminent in terms of, of any, any war or anything, but, you know, with tensions being so high and also uh, the, the Kosovo prime minister, I think he's not being very constructive and that's even being recognized by the European Union and the U.S., you know, because I, the European Union and the U.S. also don't want another, you know, another conflict, you know, starting in Europe. I mean, they, they, they have their hands full with, so it's, a, there's a lot of things going on. And, you know, we hope for the best, everybody, you know, that, that there's really, and I think what is right. I think it's always better to negotiate, um, you know, as he said, for a hundred years, than then, then, you know, just go to war. As we can see in Ukraine, it's just so horrible. But the people in Ukraine voted and asked Russia to come in and protect them from the Ukrainian army. What is the will of the people of Kosovo? Oh, I think, well, <laughs> Kosovo is much more um, uh, ethnically, uh, you know, there's, there's Kosovars are now probably 90, 90% or 90, I forget, but um, they're obviously a, a very large majority of Kosovo. So I think that um, they would almost certainly vote for independence. But here's the, here's the interesting thing is they never had a referendum in Kosovo. So they never had a referendum in Kosovo about independence, which the UN resolution was supposed to uh, provide for. And so they never voted. It was the parliament who just sort of declared independence as we're now an independent state. But there was never a referendum, which I would assume that Kosovo would, that they would win that referendum, but they never had it. They never, like in Russia, they actually held it, right? They, yes. they, they had a referendum in, in some of these, but they never had one in Kosovo. They just declared it. And, you know, US and, and France and Germany and European Union, most of the countries in European Union uh, recognized it immediately. So that was that, it's, you know. And so that's another thing that obviously doesn't make um, uh, Serbs, Serbia happy and also Serbs in Kosovo, because there's still Serbs in Kosovo, obviously. Right. Yeah. OK, well, this is amazing context. I really appreciate you breaking this down for us because it's not a simple thing. And again, right. you know, as Westerners, I think they understand that we don't we don't get it all that much. And so it always helps to study this. Uh, you can follow Nick at Nick Stankovic with an underscore on X. And I really appreciate your time coming on Redacted today. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.